This is any town in the heart of industrial England. Its streets, its shops, its churches, its factories, its clubs and its pubs are part of the corporate life of the people. Any town in all its aspects is a living, pulsating whole which demands service and gives service. But it cannot live without those vital arteries through which its lifeblood ebbs and flows. Its very existence depends on transport. How then does transport serve any town? Coal is the source of power, the source of warmth, the essential of industry. Thousands of men labor to hew from the earth the fuel which will feed the factories and fires of any town. In any town, the furnaces roar incessantly and they must be fed. But any town is miles from the collieries. Here first, transport serves any town, for it brings coal to the town in long trains hauled by great engines. of a hundred chimneys is a sign that in any town's factories, machines and those who tend them are working. These machines could not move without the coal that transport brings. The people of any town too depend on coal for warmth in their homes. The inhabitants of any town demand food. More than a hundred thousand people in any town must be fed every day. It's a vast task, and men toil by land and sea that any town may have its daily bread. Seamen go down into the deep waters and return with their catch. Farmers sow the seed and reap the golden harvest. Livestock is raised and tended, countless activities go on throughout the length and breadth of the land, so that any town may eat. But all this toil would be useless if the food could not be brought to the places where it is consumed, the homes of any town. materials of industry, for the food which keeps its workers alive, any town depends on transport. Day in, day out, the vast organizations are working. At station and depot, on the line and in the siding, 
Men are handling and speeding on the foodstuffs. To every street, to every shop, to every house and person, transport brings food. It is the last stage in the long journey which the products of the earth and the sea must make. So the food reaches any town and the inhabitants distribute it to its final destinations. Any town depends on transport for its very existence. All the things that any town consumes must be brought from all parts of the world. In its turn, any town, a manufacturing center, sends its goods far and wide. Yes, sir? Jones, we're appointing some new agents. Give me these rates from the railway. Very good, sir. Anytown 249. Anytown Manufacturing here. I want a rate for our goods to Leicester. Uh, Leicester, sir? A 41 and a penny. That will be collected and delivered. Oh, give me a rate for machine tools to Bedford, please. Well, how much to Gloucester? I see. 52 and 9 delivered. Right. That's for Bangor in containers, is it? I want a rate for Oxford, please. Lincoln, that's 46 and 7. Are those Lincoln rates delivered? In containers to Hollyhead, uh, that will be 58 and 3, sir. Leeds, that's 22 and 3, S to S. Rate for Stoke. 67 and 11, uncarted. Preston, 27 and 4. And for Aberdeen? 97 and 3, sir. Any town's factories, goods pour out in an ever quickening stream. Any town's businessmen demand transport, and transport is ready to sell. Its workers and its vast organization exist so that any town's manufacturers may be quickly carried to their consumers. More and more goods are produced, more and more traffic is carried, an endless belt of prosperity. The vital link between commerce and the consumer must be maintained. Goods from any town, for London, for Belfast, for Manchester, for Wigan, for Birmingham, for Leeds, for Wakefield, for Glasgow, for Goole. Goods from any town are going abroad, going overseas. I'll do. I'll catch the I'll catch the 315. Be with you at four o'clock. All right. Yes, we'd love to come and see you. Shall we come by that midday train on Saturday? Right. We'll meet you off the 1040 train. As any town relies on transport for its goods, so does it rely on transport for its business and pleasure journeys. From any town, the country can be spanned in an afternoon. Such is the swiftness of transport, so that people are not content to stay at home. They must travel. No matter what any town's travel needs are, transport is there to meet them. 15,000 trains a day. Every minute of the 24 hours, trains are on the move all over the country. Meals are being served at 70 miles an hour. Passengers are reading, working, talking, or doing the 101 things it is possible to do on a train as they dash in safety across the country. Counties are flung behind. Hills are things of naught. Science and engineering applied to transport triumph over all difficulties.
and months slip by. Workers become tired from their labours. The coast and the country are calling. It is time for any town to go on holiday. private life of the town ceases. Shops and factories are closed, and in every home there is excited preparation for the journey. Again, the people of any town call upon transport, and again, transport is ready to serve them. The holiday needs of any town are so many and varied that everything the country can provide is required to fill them. Only transport can carry the people to the many scenes of their desired amusements. Industry's wheels are stopped. Black smoke no longer pours from her chimneys. This industrial town pauses for a space to renew its vigour and refresh its toilers. But there is no pausing, no rest for transport. Holidays. It's a magic word, isn't it? Symbolising all things to all people. The gay life of the coast resorts, the quieter charm of the small seaside places, the beauty of the country, the wild joys of the sea. And any town is deserted. Whether it be at the quieter country hotels or the crowded tennis courts, holidays draw to their close all too soon. It is time for any town to return to work. the people, refreshed, ready for another year, sun-tanned, strengthened, their minds filled with happy memories. Streets become crowded. Factory chimneys smoke once more. Industry's wheels turn again.
that whether it be by land or sea or air, transport is always there, ready and striving to maintain and improve the health, the wealth and the happiness of any town. Lifeblood ebbs and flows. Its very existence depends on transport. How then does transport serve any town? Coal is the source of power, the source of warmth, the essential of industry. Thousands of men labour to hew from the earth the fuel which will feed the factories and fires of any town. In any town, the furnaces roar incessantly and they must be fed. But any town is miles from the collieries. Here first, transport serves any town, for it brings coal to the town in long trains hauled by great engines. is any town in the heart of industrial England. Its streets, its shops, its churches, its factories, its clubs and its pubs are part of the corporate life of the people. Any town in all its aspects is a living, pulsating whole which demands service and gives service. But it cannot live without those vital arteries through which it's... Thank you. 